Hey everyone, in this video, ChatGPT is going to teach us continuous functions in topology. In calculus, we say a function is continuous at a point if the limit of a function at that point equals the function's value at that point. In topology, we express this idea without needing a notion of limit. A function f from a topological space x to a topological space y is continuous if for every open set u and y, the pre-image f inverse of u is an open set in x. This captures the same intuition as in calculus. Small changes in the input lead to small changes in the output. Let x equal the set 1, 2, 3, 4 be a set with the discrete topology where every subset of x is open and y which equals 5, 6, 7, 8 be a set with the indiscrete topology where only the empty set and y itself are open. Is the function f from x to y given by f of 1 equals 5 f of 2 equals 6, f of 3 equals 7, f of 4 equals 8, continuous. Okay, so we have to show that for every open set u in y, the pre-image is an open set in x. So let u be an open set in y. Now y has the indiscrete topology, where only the empty set and y itself are open. So there's only two possibilities for the set u. Either u is the empty set, or u equals y. So case one, u equals the empty set. Now, what is the pre-image of the empty set? Then the pre-image of the empty set is the empty set. Because if there were an element in the pre-image of the empty set, then that wouldn't make sense because that would mean that the output at that element in X would not be well-defined. For case two, we assume that U is the entire set Y itself. But since Y contains every element in the codomain, then that means that the pre-image of Y is specifically the domain of f, which is x. What's important about x is that we can write x as the union of open sets. And so that means x is open, which means f inverse of u is open, and that's what we wanted to show. Either way, f is continuous, which sounds counterintuitive because this is a discrete function. And when we think about continuity, especially from calculus one, we think about functions that quote unquote, can be drawn without lifting the pen. This is an example where that's not the case. Number two, let X be the set one, two, three, four, be the set with the indiscrete topology and Y be five, six, seven, eight, be the set with the discrete topology. Is the function F from X to Y given by F of one equals five, F of two equals six, F of three equals seven, F of four equals eight continuous? Well, the answer is no. And the trick here is to let you be the set containing the element five. Then the pre-image of U is specifically the set of all elements in X that correspond to an output five. And there's only one element in my domain that has an output of five, which is one. However, X has the indiscrete topology. And so the set containing one is not an open set in X. So this means that F is not continuous. That was pretty fun. Let's see what our next topics are. Topology, abstract algebra, number theory, or real analysis. Now, if you look at this topic here, the concept of groups in abstract algebra. Now, if you recall, we've already done a video on the concept of groups in abstract algebra. So it's a little weird to present this as a possible next topic since we've already covered this. With that said though, I really like the idea of jumping into the fundamental theorem of arithmetic because I love number theory, so let's dive into that next okay so i'm going to put this meta comment here i noticed that number two in next topics is worded as though i haven't covered the concept of groups in abstract algebra we've already discussed the concept of groups in abstract algebra we've even covered fields and vector spaces there are plenty of topics in group theory that i would like to study but presenting the next topic as the concept of groups in abstract algebra makes it seem like we haven't even discussed groups yet i don't want to jump ahead in the silo theorems which by the way, I don't know how to spell, but I also don't want to fall behind on topics that I have already demonstrated an understanding of. So this is just a way to guide ChatGPT here. Keep in mind that if you ever try something like this on your own, it should be important that you include some sort of meta discussion so that you can tell ChatGPT how to adjust its methodology in teaching you. You are in control, not the teacher, and that's the beauty of ChatGPT. So up next, let's discuss the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and number theory. Let's see how ChatGPT responds. You have shown a good understanding of the definition of continuity in the context of topology. 
Your analysis of the functions under the given topologies was spot on. Feedback. Your answers are correct. The way you consider the pre-images of the open sets in the codomain to determine whether the functions were continuous was the correct approach. This is a testament to your understanding of the concept. Nice. Throughout this conversation, you have demonstrated a good grasp of a wide array of mathematical topics, including but not limited to set theory, algebraic structures such as groups, fields, and vector spaces, sequences and topology, with focus on open sets, bases, and continuous functions, your ability to correctly and logically answer the questions presented indicates a strong foundation in these areas, allowing for progression to more complex topics. This is a great progress section. Keep in mind, I made no commentary on the progress section in this last post, but I did make a comment in the post before that regarding the progress section here. And so it looks like ChatGPT was able to remember that my expectations for the progress section is that ChatGPT needs to synthesize my entire progress through mathematics in this conversation history. And it looks like ChatGPT kept that understanding. Up next is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Let's see how we're doing with these next questions. We have the Euclidean algorithm and number theory, the concept of rings in abstract algebra, connected and compact spaces in topology, and the concept of limits in real analysis. All of these things are excellent topics to discuss next. Thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.